Hi there and welcome to our sermon review. This is something new that we're trying out uh, to make some conversation and some discussion about some of the sermons that we preach at View Church Sunningdale. Come on. If you come to our church, then you might have seen the sermons that we speak about already. If you haven't, uh, you've got access to them here on the YouTube page. You can check it out. Yeah. And uh, we've recently just started a brand new series called Balanced, where we're talking about money. Money. We're talking about cool. finances. So we've got some questions here. Uh, Pastor Swin, who's going to chat now, he's the one who preached the message on Sunday. So we've got some questions here that we're going to talk about and hopefully dig a bit deeper into the sermon, find yeah. out some more stuff, some different stuff. So we hope this is helpful. Um, if this is helpful for you, then maybe afterwards you can uh, drop a comment. If you had any further questions, please feel free uh, to drop it in the comments. We'd love to help you. All this yeah. is is just a yeah. place for us to talk about stuff and to understand things a bit better. So Swin... It's great did, to have you. Did we tell people what we're calling this? Oh, no. Yes. So the, this is going to have a name. The name yeah. can also be dropped in the comments, I think. We're thinking about the review. Well, let us know. What do you let think? us know if you like that because we're reviewing the sermon, but we're also view church. So review. See what we did there. It was pretty, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Any graphic designers that want to throw in a little you review, you can make something cool, drop that in. We're totally open to take any yeah. of your ideas because that's what preachers do best. We take other people's ideas, <laughs> we say it differently, and then we preach about it. So um, we've got a couple questions here. Uh, so when we obviously started a new series, Balance, so we're yeah. talking about money. And you start off your sermon by saying and by mentioning how hard it is for people to speak about money, especially yeah. in church. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think there's a lot of reasons, to be honest. I think some of it has got to do with um, how we grew up. We, like, I never knew what my parents were earning. We never really talked much about money, uh, to be honest. And I think because we attach so much of our security and our yeah. place in life to our money, it's kind of like um, if we don't want to let other people see that we're maybe failing or not doing as well as we want, mm. um, and so we, some people go two ways. They make themselves look really, really poor. Yeah. Other people make themselves look really, really rich, um, except they don't have anything. And, and so I think it's, it's like a shame mm. in, some, in some circles mm. because to be valued in a certain room, you have to have a certain amount of money mm. in a sense. At least we think so. Yeah. And I think a lot of us are shipwrecking our lives yeah. because we're not willing to talk about it. Yeah. And in, in the same way, when we bring light into a sinful place, mm. God shows us a way out. Yeah. If we let God bring God's light into our finances, He can show us mm. a way out that we can live a healthy life and a yeah. balanced life. You know? We joke about it because um, whenever we talk about money in church, we always find that some people don't really want to come to church for yeah. those four weeks and yeah, then they're yeah. back maybe afterwards. But we're not doing, we, we've committed and we want to do a series. We want to do balance now for yeah. the next four weeks. And we know that we're not just talking about money the way that some people think they are. But why, why are we doing this series? What, yeah. what point do we want to get across in the next four weeks yeah. um, about money? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really all about us um, having a balanced biblical perspective on money. Like God's actually got a plan for our finances yeah. and He wants to help us to live in freedom. Mm. And you know, a lot of people, we, what we do is we compartmentalize yeah. our lives where we've got a spiritual life, we've got a financial life, we've got a work life, yeah. a family life. But God has got a plan for all of that, that He has not just set us free from sin, mm. but He set us free from any kind of bondage. Mm. And so we want to help people to understand that they can have joy, peace, they can have margin in their life, yeah. um, and they can enjoy what God has given them without those things holding on to their heart. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, some people might think that, you know, whenever the church talks about it, it's because we, the church wants all your money, <laughs> right? And, and, that's not really the case. Mm. We just want to help you to live under God's blessing and, and fl work through God's plan. Yeah. And uh, to see His fruitfulness and blessing on life. Um, and like I said in the message, you know, God, you know, you know, just because you start tithing doesn't mean you're going to start getting like cars and Porsches yeah. and planes and, no. you know, but just about coming under, under God's plan and authority. Yeah, no, listen, I've been tithing. For a while now, and I've yet to receive the Porsche or the jet. Come on. But I've definitely seen God move in my life. And, blab it and uh, grab it. Blab and grab it. That's what I'm trying to Let's do. Let's go for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you really broke up the sermon so well on Sunday. And uh, each key theme, you did so well to express that. And what you did on Sunday and what you spoke about was uh, kind of that key thing was money is spiritual. Yeah. So honor God first. And, and for me, my first reaction was that 
you know, that almost sounds, it almost sounds like an oxymoron. Money is spiritual because money, whenever we think about materialism, which, yeah. you, which you go on to speak about later on, materialism, you often think about, you know, it's money and, and mm. then it would go on to maybe property or cars or clothes, or whatever yeah. it is. But you kind of go really just in the other direction and say money is spiritual. Yeah. So honor God first, yeah. uh, which is profound. Yeah. Um, could you, would you mind explaining that? Yeah, you know, we live in such a physical world that, that we forget the reality of the spiritual. Yeah. And spiritual things have impact on how we live day-to-day -day life. Like your, your values and your beliefs impact on what you do. Yeah. And money in itself, it's just paper or, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that we've printed, we put together. Yeah. But it's got attached to it, like, all of our hopes and dreams and securities. Mm. And, and, and those things should actually only be in God. Mm. And and so we can we can end up worshiping money, and that's a spirit. It's not a, it's not a, it's not like you're actually worshiping you know like this coffee. Or this coffee is great. Coffee is very yeah, good. Yeah, this is good. This is not a this is not a shameless plug for Seattle, but um, especially when you well, if Seattle, if you guys are watching, <laughs> yeah, you could you could sponsor us if you like. You can. Yeah, we'll take it. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> but um, you know, it's not like we're worshiping this physical thing there's yeah. there's something else behind it that we're worshiping but we're attaching ourselves to this physical thing mm. so money has deep spiritual impacts on how we live our life and how we trust god because god is like he's the god of all things yeah right and and there's only one person who can actually tell us what to do with our life and yeah a lot of time we think we make our decisions but it's based on what we believe about god and mm. what we believe about the things in our life mm. and so I love what Timothy Keller always says. He says, um, we attach ourselves to, to our ultimate hope, mm -hmm. but those things can't carry the weight of our soul. Yeah. You know, some people attach themselves to what their family life is like or what, mm -hmm. how they grew up or their material possessions. Mm -hmm. But those things can't handle the worship of your soul. Yeah. Only God can handle yeah. that. And so whatever comes in front of that, yeah. in front of God, becomes a lot and it's deeply spiritual. Mm -hmm. I think even just running with that thought of attaching and mm -hmm. attaching yourself to something, I think for some people, they could have come to church this week and it could be money. And that could be the thing that they find yeah. their soul is being attached to. Hey, it could be your family. Mm. It could be committing a bunch of time to that. It could be your job. Maybe not even the money. So you just really enjoy your job and yeah. pouring hours into that. Or it, complete, it could be something completely different. So we're talking about money and that's kind of our context at the moment. But I think it could yeah. really be anything. Absolutely. And for me growing up, um, kind of in high school, there were a lot of things that, that, took, my, that took more time away from church and God and me trying to invest in my relationship that I kind of thought was more important. Absolutely. But only when I kind of grew in my relationship with God and, and, and spent time in His Word, spent time in prayer, that I was kind of made aware of the, of the things that was taken kind of way too much time yeah, away, way too much focus, way too much attention. And then I could refocus and yeah. realign. So with kind of the message that you spoke about on Sunday, it, it, money could be something that could be taking far too much attention or time and and sometimes that might be happening but you might not even know about it yeah. you might not even realize that hey I'm I'm, I'm working way too long or I'm, or I'm prioritizing this one yeah. thing over things that I should be prioritizing over my relationship with God over growing personally with him yeah what just kind of think what, what do you think could be some tell signs yeah. that, that that one could if one's watching now that one yeah. could kind of think about or reflect on even look That's at good. maybe yeah. this is something i'm doing yeah. yeah it's a really good question because even some of the commentaries that i was studying um in leaning up to this message was how if if money or worrying about money or worrying about if you have enough or have you enough saved or even the bondages to debt and stress about how you're going to pay for things yeah it consumes our minds so much that we don't have any space to think about God, think about what God wants, God's purposes, God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. how, is, how does God want us to trust Him? Because, you know, we often say how money is a problem when we don't have money. Yeah. But having lots of money can be just as much a distraction because we've got money on our mind. Yeah. We, I'm not saying that we should be thinking about God 24-7 because we've got work, we've got family, yeah, there's things in our life, yeah. but... but what is the dominant thoughts in our minds and in yeah. our hearts? Yeah. Um, that's the big. That's, that's the big question. Yeah. Um, I heard. I heard somebody a, a pastor once said that that we are called to to in, actually enjoy God, mm. enjoy Him, enjoy what He gives us. Mm. But when we're thinking about all these other things, more than we think about God, we can't actually enjoy God. We mm. 
we just want God almost somehow to bail us out or or you know the thing that we think about is yeah. the thing that we want the most yeah. you know and sometimes not it's not a criticism because I think we all go through it mm. but sometimes we want God to sort the thing out that we actually want more than God yeah. in the moment and so it's just about finding that balance of yes I'm, this is stressing me out but I'm submitting it to the Lord because I want to enjoy God I want to honor Him and you know, I love what, I love what you said. You said like if I can have a lot of money, mm-hmm. and I can still be stressed. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's not the money, or we think we, we think we just need that one thing, and when we've got that thing, that that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. But I think we've all maybe lived long enough to realize that it, until we've got God, the thing yeah. that characterizes character, which is yeah. that peace and that joy. Yeah. Until we've got that, it's very hard to chase those things, especially yeah. from a monetary point of view. Absolutely. You take it on further as well when you speak about tithing, and tithing is always a kind of a hotly contested uh, subject. People love talking about it and arguing about yeah. it and chatting about yeah. it. And I mean, uh, you take it back and you talk about tithing in the Old Testament and how it was a principle before it was even a commandment. Yeah, people were yeah. doing it before any kind of instruction came from God, and and that's so profound. So I'd encourage anybody who hasn't seen the message yet to watch yeah. the message and to and go to, do it. Yeah, go do it. Go watch the message um, to go and talk about it to look at it. But what I really Really, what I really loved was how you kind of move the focus away from tithing. I think when we think about tithing, we think about me as the giver, yeah. and that's why it's so difficult. I mean, if, if you, if like you said, if you're earning a hundred thousand rand to tithe on that, that is that is a difficult process because that's a lot of money, and I think it gets harder as you would as you would earn more. But you kind of shifted the focus away from me as the as the giver to really God as the provider. Yeah. And if God is providing everything in my life, me tithing, it's not really me kind of giving something that belongs to me. I'm really giving back what God has just entrusted to me. Yeah. And then it becomes. Um, then it becomes something of stewardship. Yeah. That whole focus and that mindset, I don't think that comes naturally, and I also don't think that comes easily. No. How, what was that journey like for you as a young Christian, yeah. getting saved, working in a secular profession, and then yeah. moving into ministry and church? How did that mindset begin to shift from I'm giving or God's a provider and I'm giving back to God? Yeah, yeah. Look, for me, I think I was probably a bit more fortunate in that because when I came to faith in Christ, I was still a teenager. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't working really full-time yet. Yeah. Um, and, and my wife believes in God, and so tithing is something we kind of Stood. walked into, yeah. really. Like, that's what, that's what you do as a Christian, yeah. you tithe. Yeah. And so we've never had to be in that place of, oh, man, now we have to make space for this extra thing that we're supposed to do so we never had that that battle and mm-hmm. um, we had different battles like we we tithed but then we were unfaithful in a sense with the rest of our money yeah. and so we would get to this sometimes i have this question of and my wife and i still wrestle i mean lara and i still wrestle with yeah. some of this every now and then and we go man do you know what i could do <laughs> with that extra 10 percent i mean do you know what i could do i could i could and then I just have we just realize that this is not actually ours. Yeah. You know, and I think the struggle comes in where we think, well, I work really hard for this, mm. and it's mine, mm. and and I'm kind of, you know, I'm getting quite proud, like, yeah, I'm giving this back to God. Yeah. Or, look at me. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> <I'm tired. laughs> like that's until we realize that everything we have is a gift from God, yeah. and we're stewards and managers of what God's given sure. us. Yeah. Then it's almost saying, you know what, I'm not giving God what's mine. I'm just returning what's His so that I can live off the rest. It's radical. Yeah. Um, and so, look, I didn't have those same battles as like someone who's maybe 35, 40, and going, I would have tired for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I always think obedience on the front end is way better than, than trying to put it in later. Yeah. But, yeah. I love that. I remember you speaking about uh, the test yes, that yeah, money yeah. could pose. And I remember the analogy you used was the was the good old driver's test. And that was yeah. one of the most stressful days of my life. By God's grace, I did pass yes. first time. Come on. Um, Any other first time winners, just let us know on the comments below. And if you didn't, don't say anything. Don't say anything. And yeah, then yeah, you'll yeah. know that. You'll just trust <laughs> that you did get it first time. It's amazing how prideful we become when we do something well. <laughs> if I ever have to say something in front of other people, I'm always going to say that I did it first time. Totally. 
Um, and I love that thought of testing and how and how God can actually use money yeah. as as that test. Yeah. And you take it further to say, hey, it could be the test to see you could be faithful with yeah. more yeah. and faithful with what God has for you. How do you think that? What do you think that'll look like for for the average person? Because I think we read the scriptures and we love reading the scriptures about the yeah. great plan that God has for us. And I'm definitely not undermining that. I believe it's true. I believe yeah. that God has got great promises, and I believe He does want to bless His people. Where do you think that the test of money comes into that picture, yeah. into the picture of the future, and and ultimately how God wants to bless His people yeah. financially would be one of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we all we all want something bigger in our lives, yeah. right? We want more influence. We want maybe a bigger house, bigger car. We want um, that promotion at work. We want the recognition from the world. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, I've actually heard guys talk about how. God only gives you the public accolade or the public platform once we've paid a personal price in secret. Yeah. And, and we have to pass certain tests of faithfulness. Faithfulness is, is um, what has God given to us? Mm. And are we doing it God's way? Yeah. And are we being diligent? Are, we, are things growing that we have? Mm. Are we able to not seek the accolade but rather seek God mm. um, and allow God to bring breakthrough and yeah. God to bring the increase um, it's, it's that it's like it's, it's being a good steward doing well with what you've been given yeah. um, that we're not going into debt for instance we're, mm. we're, um, we're not living a life that we can't afford I know Dave Ramsey says act your wage yeah. you know <laughs> don't don't, don't don't wear all the name brands if, if, you know, if you're struggling at. to pay. Yeah. Like, who who does know? that? Yeah. And, <laughs> and I always think it's funny, like, you know, uh, you know, being offered, like, different kinds of watches, like, you know, Rolex, and you've got yeah. the Molex watch. Oh, I'm like, why try and wear a, a fake watch? Just yeah. buy what you can afford. Yeah. Anyway, um, but the, the, where we, like, we went way off course there, but faithfulness, you know, we want a bigger life, but the only way to get the bigger life, to get the promotion, is when we know that promotion is in God's hands. Sure. Doing well with what we have is in our hands. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, none of us can just become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. But if we are faithful with our finances, over a lifetime of faithfulness, God can produce that in our life. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it's important because we think that money is... I always thought money is the great riches. You know, if I had lots of money, who knows what I could do? Yeah. But money is just the test that of true riches of the kingdom. That's like I remember right. that yeah. parable of the talents when Jesus said, you know, I gave this one this much, this one this much, and this one that much. He was never concerned about how much they returned, just the fact that they were faithful and returned something. Returned something, yeah. You know? That's very and good. And then he said, Great, now because you've done that, I'm gonna give you this many cities to be a steward of. Mm. And for me, it's always been, I've struggled with God. I want a bigger ministry. I want a bigger platform. I want to win a city. Sure. But God's always brought it back to me. Swain, if you can be faithful yeah. with this role that I've entrusted you with now, yeah. then I can take care of that. Mm. Because if you can't be faithful with the little bit, you can't be faithful with the cities. Yeah. Um, I actually remember when I was, I was Graham's PA, and, and I don't know if, Hey, we know that nobody story. knows. <laughs> nobody knows the story, but but I used to see, you know, oh man, I, I never get to preach, and I had a bad heart attitude about it, to yeah. be honest. And yeah. Every time I said, God, if you never want me to preach, I'm okay with that. Let me be, let me be the best PA I can be, and That's I wasn't great. a great PA. Yeah. But over the next year or two years or three years, now I'm preaching most weekends, wow. and, it's, and I don't think it's because I'm gifted. I just think being faithful with what sure. you've got, God can open the door for other things. And it's the same with our money. That's so good. That is really good. I think it, I think it almost goes against the character of God to kind of give you a platform that maybe your character wouldn't be ready yet totally. to That's hold, or your character wouldn't be ready. Because he want, he ultimately wants to bless you and yeah. wants to yeah. give you the life that that he feels you're called to. But yeah. I don't he doesn't want to give you something too early. And sometimes no. those tests are a great indicator, even for yourself. Yeah. I think you will know yourself when it's just. I'm struggling in this. Well, like even you said now, you, you could identify with a bad heart attitude. Yeah. So you probably could have told yourself, I'm probably not ready yeah. to preach every weekend or, or whatever the case is. Yeah. Actually, you know, you know those, those guys who, you hear those stories of 
of these young guys who wrap their Ferraris around trees. <laughs> yeah. My God, I just don't want to give you a Ferrari. Yeah. That's just you can write it off yeah. and damage your life. Yeah, you know? or kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he wants you to be ready yeah. to handle the blessing. Yeah, know? the the right thing at the wrong time is a curse. Totally. So I think I think we can have. I'm like, write that down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how you said it. I think. It's even you're like saying I want to win a city mm. and what I could do with with the money and you probably have some really good stuff that you want to do yeah. with the money. It's like there's nothing wrong with having big dreams and big no. motives and big intentions, but God probably wants to get you into a place where you can actually fulfill those Absolutely. and not yeah. lose your soul in the yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. Just wrapping up, um, I think there might be some viewers and some people watching or even guys that are at church on Sunday yeah. that would love some first steps. Uh, just in tithing, yeah. how do I get? How do I go about tithing if I've never tithed before? Maybe yeah. someone doesn't feel comfortable. Ten percent is a lot. Maybe yeah. they don't feel comfortable starting. To, is five percent okay? Yeah. Um, what 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 would be some of the starting points for somebody yeah. like that? Yeah, I think you've got to come out of the conviction that you're going to do this. Yeah. Um, because at some point you're going to be tested with it. And, and you're going to think, oh man, you know, I just started tithing and now my fridge broke, my car's in for repairs. and So you've got to have a conviction that this is, you want to honor God with your finances. Yeah. And, and like I said, you know, tithing is only the first part of living a balanced financial life. Yeah. But to get that part under control is to say, okay, well, go through my, go through my finances, write down everything that I'm paying and look at what's there that doesn't actually need to be there. Mm. You know, I mean, gym is great. If you're going to gym, keep going to the gym, <laughs> you know. But if you've got a gym membership that you're paying for that you never go to, like, cut, tank it, man. Cut, cut it. Get Start it again there. in January when you're yeah, you know, thinking you know, about gym again. Deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and maybe it's just for a couple of months, right? Or um, check out, are you going out too much? Like, just recording yeah. what you're spending yeah. is a massive eye-opener because you bleed money without even knowing it. Wow, yeah. You know, I... I thought, no, we were, like, just the amount of coffees I drink, if I just go buy coffees out at every shop, like... Well, that surely can't be a massive problem. No, 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 no. <laughs> that big of a problem. But you'll you're, be amazed to see how much money you're actually spending without even thinking about it. Yeah. And that is, rather send that to honor God, then He can bring the rest under mm. the blessing. Mm. And you can be faithful with the rest. So look at what, you, what, you're, what you're spending that you don't need to be spending on. Um, and then put that to, to the tithe. Yeah. And whatever that number is, that's great. Start then say, God, with that's faith, great. I'm putting this in. And, I'll, and then ask God to help you to continue to increase that mm. to get to a 10%. Mm. Um, and, and so you're just going to have to review that every couple of months yeah. and see, great, these three months I was faithful with the 500 rand a month. Mm. Now, somehow I've got a little bit more space. Now I can increase that to 700 rand a month. Sure. And then just work on a plan to increase it over time. Yeah. And then when you get an increase, because now God is seeing that you're being faithful with what you've got, mm. or however that's worked out, you've worked really hard, and and you know you get extra money in. Mm. Well, it's before we upgrade our life. Wow. Yeah. Honor God. <laughs> you know. That's where it comes in. Yeah. Because we always want to upgrade our life, and there's nothing wrong with that. But so often we upgrade before we honor. Sure. And yeah. we need to honor first. That's good. Because then we, it's the test. It's mm. the test of what's more important, the more that you want or the God that you serve. Yeah, that's good. And if you can trust God and be faithful with this part, then then you can be, the rest is going to take care of us. You can be okay with the rest. Wow. Um, but it's always that space in our heart, you know, that I think, hopefully that's practical. And, no, um, I think that's super practical. And, and we never tithe to some international ministry or mm. your favorite TV show or the guy that's asking, you don't tithe to your family, you don't tithe to people in need, you don't tithe to social justice. Bible teaches how um, the tithe comes to the storehouse of the Good. Lord, yeah. which is the church. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're listening to this and you're not part of our church, that's totally cool, but be part of a local church Good. Yeah. because we never give to a church. Mm. We give to God through a church. I heard someone say mm. this really stuck with me mm. because we're honoring God through the local church. Mm. And so everything that you want to give outside of that to family, to international ministries, and you should give to international ministries if you can, yeah. but that's an overflow. That's an above an offering. Yeah. The tithe is God's portion that goes through the local church. Brilliant. Um, 
And so yeah, that's that's where I would that would be my practical starting point. That's great. Thank you so much, Swen. Yeah, that's cool. We really appreciate your time. Lacquer, like man. This is good. I had fun. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. Actually, this is good. We, we should keep doing this. I know this is your office and we and we meet here most days. Yeah. But this has been cool. Yeah, yeah. To step out. But listen, we want to really, we want to thank you if you've if you've stopped by and checked this out. Yeah. Uh, we really want ideas for a name. Totally. And if you want to design something cool, we'd love that. But yeah, yeah. this is totally just um, a platform where we can answer some questions yeah. about the sermon. Some questions that we don't get to ask when we're there on a Sunday yeah. or something that you might not have heard or might not have understood. And please use this as a platform for yourself as well. In the comments below, mm-hmm. you're more than welcome to pose a question, pose a comment, yeah. and we'll try to be as helpful yeah, as, um, we can, yeah. as we can. As we can. Hopefully we can answer questions about the messages that that we preach and speak about but we really hope this has been helpful and week two is happening this sunday at church yeah. we would love for you to join us bring somebody along and we trust right. that god will do something amazing in your life so good let us know how it goes by the way thumbs up if it's good thumbs up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it's not good